guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? Welcome back to another How About Them Celtics video. Uh, we are doing daily videos, and obviously we've done all the Summer League stuff, so we're finding new stuff. But news has come out. The NBA is doing a new in-season tournament, and they did the drawing to see the groups. Basically, it is a group stage. You play three games, right, in your group. You play each game in your group once, at least, as Sam's. What, what is, is that the, your it's shame paper mask? Bag. <clears throat> um, yeah. You play three games in each group, correct? One against each team. And then the top four. team in each four games. So you play one five, team twice. Five teams in each group. You play right. each team once. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Four games in each group because there are five teams. You play each opponent once. They did the drawing to see. And then the that what? The six winners of the groups advanced to a knockout stage with two teams getting a bye, I would assume. So if you win the group, you advance. And then the best record team in each conference that didn't win their group. So essentially the best second place team in the conference okay. will advance as a wild card. So it's eight total. Yeah. If you can hear Perfect. the uh, yes. person mowing their lawn. Love it. But they drew the groups and uh, spoiler alert, the Celtics got a fairly. Celtics got fair. a fire group. Yeah. dude. They don't <laughs> have to play anybody yes. except Orlando who beat them up last year. Yes. So actually so, Chicago beat up on him last year too, oddly enough. They did. They did. The Celtics group uh is themselves, the Brooklyn Nets, the Toronto Raptors, the Chicago Bulls, and the Orlando Magic. This it's it's I would argue it might be the easiest group, maybe second easiest behind one out west. Um for, for reference, the other groups in the east at least. 76ers, Cavaliers, Hawks, Pacers, Pistons. Cavs and Sixers probably going to be fighting to get out of there with the Hawks and, and Pacers right on them. Uh, and the Pistons aren't terrible either. And then Bucks, Knicks, Heat, Wizards, Hornets. That's that's a tough look for the Hornets and the Wizards. Because they, they ain't getting out of that. They're not um, good, no. no. And then out west we have Grizzlies, Lakers, Suns, Jazz, Trailblazers. P pretty stacked group, I would say. That that might be the best group there is out there because the only really like team that's probably not going to be super competitive is is the uh, the Trailblazers. Um, then we got the Nuggets, Clippers, Pelicans, Mavericks, Rockets. Actually, that might be the Western groups. Those two are stacked. And then the last one is uh, Kings, Warriors, Timberwolves, Thunder, Spurs. I, I guess the Western Conference they're all is like, just pretty stacked. They're pretty even out west. Like, there's no group that's like a dog like absolute juggernaut yeah. group maybe the grizzlies suns lakers jazz group depending on what utah does mm -hmm. could be like the even group of the death, rockets but... group. the rock the rockets group isn't bad either because we look at them as the bad team and i don't think the rockets yeah. are gonna be great but they're gonna be no, better than last be year uh, but well, they want to compete like they they're gonna be money, better i think they incorrectly spent their money I agree, but I think they're going to be better regardless than last year. Like, we're thinking of the Rockets that won 19 games. Like, I still think they're a 30-win team at least, right? Like, I think they'll be better. Um, but, yeah, the Celtics got a uh, – they, they got an easy straw. Easy – they they drew the, the, the best straw of the bunch. Nets, Raptors, Bulls, Magic. Obviously, like Sam said, the Magic played them well, and they will be competing next year. And they picked up two solid rookies this year as well in Anthony Black and Jet Howard. Throw uh, signed Joe Ingles as well. Paolo Bancaro is there still. Obviously, Franz Wagner, um, Wendell Carter Jr., all those guards they got. They're a talented team. The Bulls are at least trying to compete. Uh, and like Sam said, they beat up on the Celtics because they're a pretty good rebounding team. I know Porzingis isn't a great rebounder, but I wonder how much okay. he opens up. Yeah, I wonder how how much he'll improve the rebounding. <clears throat> even if like even if he doesn't grab a ton of rebounds, like opening up the space for Robin Al to grab some more um, because he has to get boxed out. Uh, and then the Raptors, not really sure what they're doing. They'll probably be annoying for you. Toronto like, doesn't know what they engage. really want to do, I don't think. They yeah. can't decide if they want to suck or not. They let Fred Van Vliet walk, kind of. He, I guess mm -hmm. they didn't technically let him walk. They did offer him money, and he walked. But, yeah, group three definitely appears to be the bum group. Who do we not talk about, Orlando? The Nets, too. Or, we or haven't talked Nets. about the Nets. That's, yeah, and the Nets. Who cares? I think the Nets will be, like, okay. I think they'll – I – when I think of the Nets, I think of them similarly to the Jazz last year and like how well they did. I feel like they'll be like somewhat competitive. Like they'll be okay. They have a couple good guys. Like the Cal Bridges might be an all star. Like Laurie Markin was an all star. Uh, they got Cam Johnson, who's a solid player. Nick Claxton is very good defender too. Like they have the Nets have the perfect team if they had a star player, right? Like like they have yeah, the perfect they supporting have a lot cast. Of, they have a really good yeah role players. And Bridges they just don't have their own star B player. He, I think he could be the two on a title team. I just don't know if he can be a one, and he's going to get the chance to be a one on a solid team. 
I think Mikael Bridges averages like 25, six and six on like pretty solid shooting. I think he'll be an all-star next year. It's yeah, yeah. it's not a knock on him. I think he's been really great. Exactly. He obviously lit up the Celtics. He had a couple big games. He had one against Miami where he had 45 points last year. Like he's not a joke. And ever since he joined the nets, that team hasn't been the best, but he has taken his game to another Very level. Good. So he's one to keep an eye on, yeah. but if the Celtics don't get out of this group, what are we going to do? But my thing is they obviously should get out of the group, but I think it'll come down to if they treat it like the in season tournament, right? Cause these all count as regular season. They games. count. <clears throat> yeah. And I'm not saying, obviously we saw the Celtics struggle in the regular season a bit towards the end of the year, but are they going to treat these ga- like regular season games and shorten the road or like regular season games in the sense that they'll play, you know, they'll play their 12 man rotation. They won't overplay Tatum. Or are they going to say like, okay, we want to win these games specifically. Let's play Tatum, you know, maybe 38 minutes. Let's play Jalen, maybe 38. Let's get Derek White. Like, are they going to treat it like a playoff ish rotation and up the guys? And at the same time, the magic beat them X amount of times last year, right? Just like when, when you think of, okay, this is their group and this is, you know, they're better than this team. It's usually in the context of, oh, I don't think the magic could beat them in a seven game series, or I don't think the nets could beat them in a seven game series. This is one game. I'm not saying the Celtics shouldn't be expected to win because they are the best team in this group by a pretty fair margin, by probably a larger Correct. margin than any other team is the best in their group respectively. But if the Celtics just run into a couple bad nights. They're cooked. Right. And so, so, as much as okay, we sit here in this tournament, what'd you say? It's a case for any team in the tournament. Exactly. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to sit here and be overly angry. If the Celtics don't get out of this group again, you look at it on paper and you say they should absolutely get out of this, but these are one and gun games. They are playing four games. If they go two and two, it's probably not good enough. But at the same time, like I don't expect them to sweep the Raptors or, or the Nets next season. You know what I'm saying? Like, or even the magic, right? Those are, they're competitive enough teams where it's like, I'll be happy if they go like three and one against them or two and one against them in a one game series, anything can happen. So it's, it's weird to set. It's not weird to set expectations, but it is, it is a tough thing to fully gauge whether or not you can expect them to advance. Because I think what you're going to see with the in season tournament is because these are also regular season games, literally anybody could make it to the second round. And once you get to that second round, those are still regular season games. Like I think once you start to get into the, you know, the four teams left, maybe teams will be like, okay, we actually have a really good chance to win this. So let's, let's hike up the minutes. Let's hike up the rotation a little bit. Uh, unless you're the Raptors or I guess the Sixers now with Nick nurse, who just likes to run guys 40 minutes a night. But yeah, it, it, it's a weird thing. Cause I think truly anything can happen in the in-season tournament, just like it can in March Madness. I mean, you see 16 seeds beat one seeds. You see, you know, 13 seeds beat X seeds all the time. You know what I'm saying? So anything can happen. It's interesting. But I, but... I don't really think that you're going to see, like, a lot of surprises. This is set up so it's not in favor of surprise teams making the knockout stages. Like, it would be one thing if it was, like, 30 teams, one bracket, single-game elimination, then you could be like that. But, like, mm-hmm. okay. Let let's like look at the groups, right? We'll we'll put let's say Utah as an example or or Houston, okay. right? Like two teams that are like kind of okay. They're sure. in tougher groups. Can you really feel like they're gonna advance out of a group? You think they're gonna have the best record out of any team in their group or this this fifth bet or fourth best record in the conference? I'm not saying they're definitely going to. But I'm saying I'm not going to say the Jazz can't beat the Lakers on a one-off night. I'm not going to say they can't beat the Warriors on a one-off night, right? Like, I don't know how the schedule is laid out. Like, do they play these games back to back to back to back? Are these four? So games, these like- games will be running through November, yeah. and well, they will run through early November. It'll be Tuesday and Fridays, so it starts on November third, and the championship game will be. December 9th. No, I know, but my the point is like knock hold on. It'll tip off the third. It'll run through the 28th, which is a Tuesday, and each team will play four designated group play games on quote unquote tournament nights, one game against each opponent in its group, two games at home, two on the road. Tournament nights will be Tuesdays and they will be Fridays in November. Yeah. My thing is though. Like you, I, and I don't know if the, I don't know if this is, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, released or they know the answers to this. But like you, l- like you used Utah as an example. I'll use this as an example too. <clears throat> Say Utah plays the Lake, <coughs> the Lakers on that Tuesday night game, right? And then they have the Warriors on that Friday night. 
do they have the Timberwolves on a Wednesday? Like as just a regular season game? Do you know what I'm so, saying? There is something in here about back-to-backs. Hold on, I'm searching. Because like my thing is, if they played the group stage games like super tight, like say the knockout games, obviously like you use the Celtics group. They, they have are the doing what they can to avoid back-to-backs from what I read. Not, 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 I don't, I don't mean back-to-backs as in play on Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, are there going to be other sporadic regular season games in the middle of these tourney games, right? You said Tuesday and Friday. Could well, the Celtics Jack, play? if they play a game in between those two games, it's either on Wednesday or Thursday. There's going to be a back-to-back. Okay. I got you. I understand. But then, okay. So essentially okay. like the non-tournament games will be weekend games and okay. meaning probably Sunday. Say say the Celtics play on Tuesday and then the Friday game and then the Sunday game or, or the Jazz, right? We're using the Jazz as an example as a team that's probably not expected to come out of the group. <clears throat> say they play on Tuesday, Friday, and then Sunday as just a normal regular season game. And then there are t- two more tourney games Tuesday, Friday, right? All it takes for them is if they have a four in one week, like no, no one would blink an eye if the, the Jazz had a four in one week. They'd be like, oh, that's pretty good. Look at the Jazz go. They're on a little run. If those four wins are their tournament games and their one loss is like, just the off regular season game. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I I know it's not as likely for these lower seeded teams to make a run, but I do think it's possible. Like the Celtics have a cold shooting week. They, they could drop a game to the Raptors or the Nets and they could drop a couple. I, it's, it's like the world cup, right? Like you can see teams come yes. out of those world cup group stages that aren't expected to come out. It's just not as easy as a March madness where it's one and done, but I do think it's possible, right? Like who, who was the team that made the world cup like quarterfinals this year? There was, I, there was, there was a team that made a run this past year, and everyone was like, "Oh, look at them go!" I'm I'm gonna look it up because I, I think it's a good oh, example here. You know, you remember what I'm talking? It was uh, Morocco. Morocco. Morocco made a run. <clears throat> Morocco made a run. No one expected them, but all it took was that they got hot for a couple weeks, right? And then that, that's true. Used to say the Jazz can't get hot, and I think that's a big reason they're doing this in season tournament, right? Because it draws that sort of intrigue. But yeah, the um, reason they yeah. want to do it is to get people to care about the early season games in November. And just yeah. to swing back to the back to back thing. To avoid teams resting star players during tournament games, the NBA will try to avoid scheduling games back-to-back. And certainly on the second night of uh, the back-to-back, though some may yeah. come on the front end, is what they say. That makes sense. I will also say, I feel like they should have put it in like December. Am I crazy? Because like I, I think it would have like... been cool to have the final on Christmas, but then, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It's hard to plan out the rest of the Christmas Day slate mm-hmm. with the final or... I don't know. I think they did a good job. I, I don't I, my see only, what the difference is. My only thing is, it's you said it starts November what? Third? Third. It, the, the group stage runs through the month of November. I feel like people are still care at the beginning of November because they're still like, oh, basketball's finally back. Because it starts like, what, the 20th? Right? So you're only like three Mid-October, weeks into the season. Yeah. I feel like you start that middle November. I, I think what you said is perfect. Do the last game on Christmas because people care about Christmas, but they care about it more if it's the final. I don't know. That That's just a minor gripe. I, I think this should be fun at the very least. Like we said, the Celtics threw a pretty easy group. Nets, Raptors, Bulls, Magic, but they should win the group. They should probably win that group. Yeah, Joe Dumars, uh, what is he? The head of basketball operations for the whole league. Yeah, Everybody's not going to buy in right away. That can't be the goal that everybody is going to buy in from day one. <laughs> These things take time. As time goes on, I think you can build this up and people can really get into it. Now, yeah, I think that's true. And as far as we're all concerned this year, this tournament is Mickey Mouse unless your team wins. <laughs> I agree with that. I'll back that statement. Yeah. But yeah, that's the if Celtics, the Celtics group. win. Then they rule. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, that's Celtics group. Like we said, Celtics, Nets, Raptors, Bulls, Magic, probably the easiest group of the bunch for the C's. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Subscribe to How About Them Celtics. We're at 825 subs now. It's kind of mm. nuts. <laughs> thank you very much. But uh, yeah, go ahead, Sam. Yes, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any breaking news updates. We've done a few this week. We had the Grant Williams trade. Where we reacted to the Summer League game on Saturday and Sunday by the time you're watching this. And make sure you don't miss any of it by hitting the bell. Leave a like, comment. Follow the social medias at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook is just the name of the podcast. Make sure you follow Jack on Twitter at Jack's Money NBA. You can follow me at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Check, Jacko. Come on. Jacko. Stop, Jacko. Jacko.